Where are you? Where are you? I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid. Who told you? She did. He did. Tricked me into it. So I ate it. The first garden, the first morning of humanity. First morning of humanity. The sunrise. The garden. And so her. And a huge cloud swallowed up a big, big, big share of the endowment of the Creator. And darkness came in and smothered that light. On that first morning of humanity, our first afternoon, actually, there's there's a wonderful rabbi and a priest from Long Island who come to the Holy Land together and tour together with their people. And so we say a Shabbat Shalom to all our Jewish friends right away. And in this uh, situation, in this process, oops, not looking where I'm going. Sorry about that, people. Hope nobody got hurt. And in their conversations, it emerged that a fascinating little detail that the fall of Adam and Eve 
happened at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Isn't that amazing? Do you connect any dots? That's the Jewish tradition. So it didn't happen at sunrise, it happened at 3 p.m. And there's a reason for that because then God shows up in the breeze in the afternoon. And that's when that gets really strong. You know, around four, give them time to make their fig leaves and get their covers on and hide and deal with their new situation of shame and fear and distance among each other between each other, particularly a distance between them and God, a fear. That's the text we're reading. And you know, let me jump ahead really, really, really fast, fast forward, like really fast forward the movie, okay? And something amazing is happening because Right there, there's a promise of salvation, even though the text we're reading today from Genesis 3 has very harsh words and very strong words. You know, it's like the kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar or spilled the gasoline can in the garage and dad's not happy. You know, it happened maybe more or less by accident, but the kid was climbing up on it or whatever, you know. And or the eggs got broken and there's a mess on the carpet and it was because the kids were fighting over the teddy bear and, you know, the, there are harsh words spoken. Uh, that's just so we can relate to that phenomenon at the moment of, of hurt, you know. But inside that text, there's an extraordinary... It's called the Proto-Evangelium, the, the first gospel. That the woman's heel would crush the serpent's head. That her descendants, the seed of the woman, the descendants of the woman, would crush the serpent's head. And so there's the promise of hope that evil and the sources of evil that invade so much into the holiness of conscience and God's creation would not have the final word. And when I heard that here, in fact, uh, the priest was over visiting and we were just outside our house here a number of years ago. And he was telling me about the conversation with the rabbi, Rabbi Gadi. Gadi is the name of the rabbi. Isn't that amazing? I think of his name first right now. And the priest is Roy. And that comes back to mind now. It's amazing how our memory can work. And he told me that Rabbi Gadi had told him that it happened at three in the afternoon. Where does your mind spring immediately? Mind sprang immediately to Calvary. Because the descendant of the woman crushed the serpent's head by not yielding to hatred to violence as response. But that sacrifice on Calvary that overcame sin and hatred and death by going through death. And that cloud of evil and compromise and weakness and divided heart that blinded us for so much of God's goodness and creation. It was not definitive, and that victory would come again. You know, God has an amazing way of turning things around. That's his great skill, you know, his, his great skill in creation, no doubt about it. The first uh, great Christian thinkers commented a lot on that that the mystery of creation is so fascinating and reveals so much about God's brilliance, his power, his love for us to give us a world like this, a paradise like this, you know. These are just weeds, okay? And even the weeds are that beautiful, you know? And his, 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 but his goodness and his, his brilliance and his love and his truthfulness and his fidelity are much more revealed 
in the very act of redemption, which is a huge act. You know, it's starting already from, as a promise from that moment of the fall. And it's consummated on Calvary, on Easter Sunday, in Pentecost. What extraordinary brilliance of God. And then involving us, imperfect people, poor sinners, in this mystery of salvation, that our role can be so significant, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, you know, they all had their imperfections. The Bible is, doesn't hide them. The Bible is very clear about them. It's really amazing. Fascinating. Fascinating. There's no question about it that the greatest drama ever written is the mystery of salvation. And actually, most of the greatest literature and art uh, follow the logic of that mystery. Great works of art, of literature, drama, they follow the mysteries of redemption, creation and redemption, the bounty of creation and the extraordinary turnaround of redemption when all seemed lost. So I invite you to read Genesis 3 in that light and the text we have posted today. And I want to tell you now something very beautiful happened yesterday, right up here on this balcony. It was very, very windy and we had a Facebook Live. But this, the house shielded us. What it did was it also reduced the amount of the lake we could see, but still it was very beautiful. And very good friends, from CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network, Chris Mitchell and his team in Jerusalem uh, brought us on to a Facebook Live. We were all kind of learning the process, so don't look for the maximum of technological brilliance, but all the great technology of the world today for communication was at play. Probably satellites were involved, engineers, technicians, sound people, light people, you know, all these people that do this great work today so we can communicate right now on this sunrise stroll and chat from Galilee. And you're over there in Alaska or you're in California or you're in Singapore or Hong Kong. And we're connected. Well, anyway, Chris uh, invited us, Kathleen Mitchell and myself, to come on to his Facebook Live, uh, Jerusalem Dateline, and I've put up the post on uh, the, the link for that in this post that's going up with this uh, chat this morning. Hey, look at these weeds, and look at the beautiful flower they have. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? That's the first flowers I saw on this plant now this year. Amazing abundance. And then these beautiful flowers we've often seen in here is, are ruining this tree. They're creeping up here and killing this tree. I hope the lake authorities can come and protect the tree. And that's the way then the weeds grew and they grew in the garden of humanity that God had planted in the hearts of people. The blame game started, the cover up started, the hostility started. And the beautiful garden was damaged and actually we got locked out. Provisionally, because being, being locked out provisionally was part of the therapy to get us back in shape. Like the little kid, you know, hasn't been good. So you, this is like 40 years ago. So you can't see television this evening because you misbehaved. Shh, be quiet. People are sleeping here, people. People are sleeping here in the tent. Don't wake them.
Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? More people here. So I don't want to wake up the sleepers. So if you have um, uh, friends to send that link to do that, please Especially when one article came out recently, you know Catholics are organizing a pilgrimage in the Holy Land virtual pilgrimage Well, you know, I don't want to brand it just as Catholics, you know, we're disciples of Jesus and so many other people are so now you have this uh, Evangelical primarily an evangelical audience with CBN, but many other people watch it and it's news from Jerusalem and from the Middle East. And Chris is an experienced faithful soldier here and he spoke about Magdala because he's come here a lot and did a lot of presentations. And he gave Kathleen and myself a chance to talk about the pilgrimage. So it's a nice way to, oh, sorry. I think I'll wake up more people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, this little boy is here. He's, look at his little dog. And his dad is probably here fishing and his family. Bogartov. Oh, Dobre uh, Jutro. Yeah? Dobre Jutro, Russian people here. Great. I could tell. And look at this here. Fishing at the Sea of Galilee. Hey guys, why don't you come here and fish at the Sea of Galilee as well? This is, this is live stream, you know. Did you catch anything? No. No. Look at the weights hanging here. You know, fishermen still fish here at the Sea of Galilee, people. There were about 12 or 14 tents uh, here yesterday. There are a little bit less today, but I imagine there'll be a lot for the weekend. Well, who knows? It's already the weekend, it's Saturday. Another guy over here fishing. He also looks like he's a Russian. It's funny, you can tell here, and after living here for a while, you can tell a lot of the people's background. Just when you see them. Now there's another very beautiful story that's very pertinent this morning, and that's in the gospel today. And that's Jesus with the crowd. And he has compassion because they have nothing to eat and they're far away from everywhere. And except this morning, the light is not very good to help us. It's very hazy. But actually it's right over there, straight in front of us, is the second miracle of the loaves with the seven loaves. And those of you who have been in Dukenaltum have seen the boat altar. And on the boat altar, there's a tabernacle where the Eucharist is kept, the sacrament. And the door of the tabernacle has seven breads in the basket to remember that miracle which happened right across from Magdala. And then it says in the gospel that Jesus and the disciples crossed the boat to the other side. So we have to be question if he crossed over this direction to Magdala. I think I'm not going to go down this path this morning. Well, maybe I'll just go a little bit to show you where we were yesterday, so you understand. We went all along here. Uh, well, I went down on my own yesterday, the day before we went down together. And then we went down to those cliffs, the southern cliffs uh, of Mount Arbel. 
and we went down uh, quite a bit beyond that what you see here because that's just the, the the first peak and then you go down further there's another one that's where we were where we started yesterday in the morning and worked our way back so we leave we leave it with that today because our time is closing in so imagine uh, tomorrow is Sunday and Monday we're starting the pilgrimage so I hope you guys are signed up hey look at this somebody left out their salads that's nice. It's amazing the mist that's here. I think the coyotes must have come in. Amazing. You know, the garden can be destroyed. We can all contribute to the destruction of the garden that God has given us. Thanks be to God in our world today, there's a, a growing interest and sensitivity to keeping the garden in good shape. And since I was a child, we had that at home on the farm, you know, never leave plastic around, plastic bags from fertilizer. We never left paper around. Tidiness, neatness, thinking of the others, also thinking of the animals because they didn't need those stuffs. And animals out of curiosity might chew on something that was bad for them. So my dad instilled in us a great sense of care and respect for the plants and the animals on the farm. And a marvelous concept that Pope Francis has developed, very interestingly, is human ecology. Because there's a wonderful segment of humanity that's very keen on the nature ecology taking care of the rivers and the streams and the whales and the dolphins and all the little critters, but to take care of the human being. And there are two levels there, the life of the human beings from the beginning of our life to the end, but also the heart and mind and soul of the human being. We can't let dirt in there. You know, God gave us a crystal clean heart and soul. And it's so easy to poison a child's mind with the story, with the bad example. And our own minds, we're responsible for our own minds, our own hearts, what we take in from the media, how we need to take care of this. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to take care of God's amazing gifts. So people, uh, it's our time. Don't forget to register for the pilgrimage, to share it, to share the CBN Jerusalem Dateline link there to all your friends uh, whom you know. And then we have uh, a beautiful line to finish off this morning, which is our psalm today. In the link you have it there. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world brought forth. What a magnificent psalm because it's a contemplation of creation. You know, the account of creation that's in Genesis 1, 2 and 3 is not just there, it's all over scripture. And here we see the reference again, you know, in Psalm 90. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth from everlasting to everlasting you are God. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust. And that's actually also a part of the text today. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday. And the next Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, you remember man you are but dust, and unto dust you shall return. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Thank you, people. It was a delight to have you this morning. What a beautiful morning we've had. God bless you. See you later, alligators.